Hello everyone. In this After Effects tutorial, we're going to be creating this kind of cartoony warp speed, hyperspeed, hyperspace. I don't really know. It's uh, these lines, these lines that go towards the middle of the screen and the outside of the screen. It makes you think like you're going somewhere, even though you really aren't. Isn't that a weird metaphor? I'm Evan Abrams, and this is a cartoon warp speed effect. So here in After Effects, I'm just really enjoying watching my intro keep playing, and we're gonna be focusing on turning an array of dots or shapes or whatever into these lovely lines. You'll see in this example, we have a gradient going on. You don't have to, it could be a picture, it could be little hearts, it could be anything. That's one of the things I love about this kind of technique. Before we jump into it, I'll just say there are many ways to accomplish this kind of look. This is the one that I've found kind of uh, most flexible to some of my needs. It's not as procedural, but I find it fairly flexible. So let's uh, get into it. We're gonna make a new composition. I'll just call this the example. It's 10 seconds long, it's 1920 by 1080. None of that is important. You could be working with squares, you could be working with vertical, it doesn't matter. The important stuff that we're gonna get to starts now. The first thing to get into is making your array of dots. Now in our example, they all exploded out of the middle, so we might as well do that. So I'm just gonna make a shape layer. You don't have to use shape layers though. You could use image layers, Photoshop layers, it could be anything. So I'm just gonna use these little 100 by 100 little circles so we know oh yeah, all the circles are like the same size. Cool. They're a nice purple or pink or whatever this is. And I'm just going to keyframe their position. I'm going to set a keyframe here and I'm going to go ahead, maybe 30 frames. I'm holding down shift and hitting page down to move ahead. And we're just going to drag this thing out, making sure we toggle on our mask and path visibility. And we'll just drag this out and I will ease these keyframes. So I'm just going to hit uh, F9 to easy ease that. I'm going to go into the graph editor here. I'm going to drag its handles so that it's accelerating in this way. So it's kind of there and then it accelerates and slows down. And I'm just gonna duplicate this a few times. So duplicate, maybe one could go here, maybe one could go there, maybe one could go over here. I'm really just trying to fill in the frame. I'll probably make about nine of these. Yeah, there's eight of them. Oh, this, this spot seems a little sparse. Let's put one over here. So one of the things I like about this technique is that if you need a manual arrangement of shapes, this works on it. So it works on any kind of layer, any arrangement. And if you want to do this to a particle system, you can do that as well. It's going to work there too. So we've got our things kind of laid out in two dimensions. Let's push them into the third dimension. So I'm just going to make all these 3D and then I'm going to just uh, right click new camera and I'm going to drop a camera in here that's sort of 50 millimeters and below. Maybe we'll do 35 millimeters just to make it a little bit more exaggerated. So once you've got that, that focal length, that uh, the smaller that is, the more exaggerated your perspective is gonna be. So when I go one view, let's go to two views and I'm gonna start grabbing these, uh, grabbing these, these little planetoids or whatever and start moving them around. Let's just shift these things forward and backward kind of just randomly. Yeah, maybe this one here can go woo, you can go back here. This one, you can go wee way up here, getting really in your face. This one needs to come over like so. Ooh, this is forming kind of a line. That's kind of an oopsie. So we'll fix that up real quick, just like this, nice. If you're not working with procedural stuff, you may have to do a little massaging, do a little bit of, a little bit of self-checking on this just to make sure you don't uh, do too much whoopsie. There we go, this is looking nice and random-ish, cool. So I'll just play that back and you can see, poof, kind of explodes. But like I said, you don't have to explode yours out of the middle. That's not critical here. Uh, let me just make these a little bit different colors so we can kind of tell, you know, what's going on. I'll make these like a little bit lighter and more saturated, sure. And I'll grab a couple of these and make them, you know, maybe a little bit darker, a little bit less saturated. Cool, just so we have some variation in what's going on. So these array of dots, <laughs> they explode out. We want the lines to go into the middle and towards the outside. So what effect might make that happen, right? What effect could we use? I'm gonna go layer, new adjustment layer, so I can drop a layer above everything, apply effects to that, and it'll apply it to everything under it, like a weird effects lens. And I'm gonna go radial rate, R-A-D, radial blur, radial. We have three radial blurs to choose from that are all going to get us kind of close. I prefer the CC radial blur for this application. 
So I'm just going to drag that out. And if you want to explore the other ones, you have fun with that. But for this purpose, I want to speed us along. So we're going to go CC radial blur and not scratch, but centered zoom. Now centered zoom means, so imagine this is the center. It's going to push both forward and backwards away from that. So you'll notice I keep pushing this up. It goes up to 250. Hey, that's pretty good. That's pretty close. Everything's kind of see-through, so that sucks. But... It is doing the thing. It's pretty close to the thing we wanted. So we just need to clamp down on the things we don't want. And I'm gonna clamp down on it using a curves, a thing used mostly for clamping. And we're gonna go curves. And instead of affecting the RGB, red, green, blue, we're gonna affect the alpha. And you can barely see the line. And I'm just gonna move the top handle all the way over to the edge, all the way over. You might need a little bit of subtlety on yours, but I am not feeling subtle today. Now we have that cartoony hard edge on here. In fact, the edge is a little bit too hard, if I had to say. So you can slack this off a little bit, I guess, but because of the extremeness up here, you're gonna get you're gonna get a little bit of sadness up there. So instead, let's put some more let's put some more uh, mayonnaise on this and get a matte choker. Let's drop that out on here. So the matte choker is looking at the alpha. It's applying some geometric softness. So let's say 10 geometric softness, really soften it out and only choke it by about 10, only clamp down on this by about 10. That looks pretty good. So if we toggle that on and off, it's really just taking that hard edge away, which is very nice. It's being very pleasant. And now we're kind of back to the quality we were searching for. So if I, if I play with this centered zoom thing, pew, yeah, that's feeling correct. That's feeling pretty good. In these areas here though, where we have overlap of these objects, that's not ideal. That's not what we want. So we're gonna come back and kind of fix that up in a minute. But I wanna just work with it all on one layer so it's nice and easy. If you wanna keep it simplified, just give yourself enough space so that these don't overlap at all, and then you'll be fine. But uh, for us, we are going to fix it up. I wanna show you how to fix it. But let's get animating this thing. So we needed to animate from an amount of zero. And let's see, so it's exploding out, it's still drifting a little bit. And let's go from say one to three seconds. And then the amount can go up to like 200 or so. And I'm gonna grab those keyframes, gonna ease them by hitting F9. I'm gonna open up the graph editor and I'm just gonna grab sort of the handles of the graph editor a little bit. I'm gonna squish them. You might use uh, a script or a panel to kind of do this. Maybe you use flow or something. You know, we can just use the graph editor. We don't need to be super fancy. So maybe three seconds, maybe less than three seconds for it to, you know, warp speed activate. And then we're gonna fire through this. So we've got a camera. We are going to use the camera's motion, you know, telegraph what's gonna go on. So I'm gonna set a keyframe here for the position. Once things start get to, whoa, it's getting a little wacky. It's gonna draw back. So the camera's gonna pull back a little bit and then it's gonna fire on through. So it's gonna fire right on through this. Going through, there we go. And it's gone all the way through. I'm gonna ease those. So selecting the keyframes, easy, ease them. Go into the graph editor. Let's mess with these handles. Push this one so it accelerates towards the end, like that, which can help to cover up some of the whoopsies that this effect stack can cause. So if these just disappear one at a time, that'll make me very happy. And then, let's see, let's have it do a slow There we go. So this explodes just like that. We're warping on through. Pretty great. We need to warp to somewhere. So we need the resultant, once everything is gone, once all these lines are gone, we don't really know we're moving forward. So we could stand to have, you know, maybe uh, another duplicate of one of these. What's that? Layer nine. I'm just going to duplicate layer nine here. I'm going to make it not 3D. I'm going to cancel out its position stuff. And we're just gonna move it ahead, move it ahead in time. And when does it need to start animating on? Probably around here. And we're just gonna have this, I'm gonna call it its scale in here. It's gonna scale up from zero, maybe to, I don't know, 250, maybe. And it's being distorted, it's being messed up because of the adjustment layer. You can just put this above the adjustment layer if you really want to. But like I said, there's a fix coming, hold tight. So we're gonna grab these keyframes here. I'm gonna easy ease this last one, pull its handle. Let's just play this back. 
explodes, stretches. Oh, nice. And we could probably loop that, right? We could loop this. Foom. Just like that. Exploding purple planet. Totally wonderful. As promised, if we want to clear up this situation in here, we don't want to design around this. We want to clean this up. What we'll do is we'll just grab this effect stack. We'll copy it off of the adjustment layer. We'll stop looking at the adjustment layer and we'll paste it onto everything else. So we'll just paste. And now you'll notice it brought keyframes with it. So we don't really want to bring those keyframes along. I'm hitting uh, U to call up the keyframes. What we want is the amount of the radial blur on shape layer nine. We want the amount here. Let me go like this. I want the amount here to reference this amount. So hold down Alt, click on this stopwatch and pick whip from this one up to that one which means the two values will now always be the same. So what would that look like? Well, in this case, it's gonna be uh, just one of them stretching and, and going, so that's cool. Uh, what we'll do is then just grab this, we'll select all of them, we'll copy that, and we're copying also that expression, that's part of it now too. And then we just paste it to every one of these. And now you can see we get to preserve nice hard edge between them. Pretty great, I think. Let's uh, play that back. Grind, grind, grind. And there it is. So it's going right through all the motions. It's zooming into stuff. But I think that should be enough to uh, get you going. Hopefully you've enjoyed going through this tutorial. Maybe you warped on through. Maybe you watch these tutorials in double speed. I have no idea. You know, I'd, I'd recommend it so you don't have to listen to me as long. But all that being said, if you had trouble with this tutorial, please let me know in the comments and I'll try to get you through. If you'd like to get your hands on the project file that we just made here, this example, then head on over to evanabrams.com. All our project files are available at pay what you like pricing and all those donations go to keeping the channel going around here. And if you've enjoyed learning about this kind of thing, if you like motion graphics after effects, please subscribe to this channel. And if we haven't covered a topic you're really interested in yet, please let me know on Twitter at EC Abrams. Ask me in the comments here. Send a request. I do uh, get around to the things people request. It's true. Thank you so much much for watching. I've been Evan Abrams, and if you subscribe, we'll see you around the internet.